Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at creating a gauge chart somewhat similar to the one that you're seeing on the screen. Now this is fully customizable so that the actual values on the chart can be really easily altered. And the chart is going to vary, the little indicator is going to vary according to what the underlying value is that you want to plot on the chart. So let's see how we're going to do this. Now I have a worksheet here that's already set up with the kind of information that we need. I also have just a little picture of the chart so we can see what it is that we're trying to do. There are a couple of notes here that is that hidden one, this value here, has to be the total of areas 1, 2 and 3. And the reason for this is that this is actually a donut chart and so what the bottom part of the donut that we're going to hide in a minute, it has to be basically half the value of the entire chart. So that's why it needs to equal the sum of these three areas. And that's why the chart is adaptable because if these areas change then the chart's going to alter accordingly. Now the pointer, we have a setting for the width of the pointer and that's this value here, that how wide it is. There's also a hidden 2 which is going to be the hidden part of the chart which is going to be basically from here all the way around to here. And then the setting is the value that is this sort of part of a pie chart and it's going to push the pointer along. And so hidden 2 has a value it needs to be. So it has to be the total of all of area 1, 2, 3 and hidden and it needs to be less also the setting and the width. So let's preset our data here. So I'm just going to use the sum function and I'm just going to total these three values into this cell because that's what hidden 1 needs to be. And then hidden 2 has to be the total of everything here. So let's do an equal sum here. Let's total these areas and then we need to subtract from it setting and width. So I'll do minus setting and minus width and press enter. So we now have the data that we need. I'm going to reuse the data I used for this chart just so that you can see it being built up. But remember that this is fully editable. Now my values that I started with were 25, 25 and 50. And then for my setting, it doesn't really matter what this is, but this is from the picture and I used 57 and 2. So this is the data we need for our chart and the first thing is we need to create our donut chart. I'll select over this data, choose insert and then these charts here and just choose a flat donut. It's important that you choose a flat donut. Now if you don't want chart titles and legends you just get rid of them immediately. I'm going to click on this, right click and choose format data series. We need to rotate this round and the angle of rotation is 270. That puts this big slice, the half of the chart, at the bottom. Now I'm going to the fill options. The first thing I want to do is to remove these white lines. So I'm just going to click on no line. And then I'm going to click on this shape in particular, right click and choose format data point. So you make sure that this reads format data point and you're going to set that to no fill. So there is our half a chart. Everything is done there and ready to go. At this stage, if you want it to be bigger, you could resize it. Now I need a copy of this chart, so what I'm going to do is make sure the chart is selected. I'll go to the Home tab, I'm going to copy it. I'm going to click away from the chart and then just paste it back in again. Now when I'm moving it around, I need to be really careful that I don't grab hold of the chart itself inside its box. I just want to be grabbing hold of the outside because we need these to line up again later on. I'm going to right click this area here and choose Format Chart Area. I want it to have no fill so I can poke a hole virtually. I can see through this top chart into the one underneath. Now I also need to change this chart. So I'm going to Chart Design. I'm going to change the chart type. In this case, we're going back to Pi. We're just going to create this as a flat Pi chart. So just click OK. Of course, the data that is in this chart is the outer data. It's not the pointer. So we need to reset our data. So I'm going to select Data and this is the chart data range over here for the chart underneath. We want to be a different range, so we're just going to select here on these three values. You can see our chart changes. That's perfect, exactly what it should look like. I'll click OK. Now we're going to come back in and start removing some of these colors. So I want to see format data points showing up here. I've got this big gray area selected, so I'm going to click on No Fill. 
I've got this blue area selected now. I'm going to click on No Fill. Now you might have realized a little bit before I removed those colors that in actual fact there was white borders on these. So let's just go back and see if we can pick up the Format Data series. There we are and go to select border. So we're going to the fill options, border, none. So that's actually going to make this little pointer a little bit wider simply because the border is not there. Now I do want to go back and find this little data point here. Here it is, data point. And I'm going to change its color to bright red just so we can see it more easily. Now this is done. All we have to do is line these two charts up. So I'm going to click on the backmost one and I'm going to control click on the front one. I'm going to shape format and I'm going to choose a line center and a line middle. And that just puts the two charts on top of each other. And then I'm going to group and I'm going to click group. Now as a group they should move together. Sometimes they won't move perfectly so you just want to make sure that you select them and then move them. But if you pick up one and move it and the others don't move like I've just done then you'll want to press Control Z to just undo it and put them back together again just making sure that when you do select them that you're moving both charts together. Now, I don't need my picture any longer so I'm just going to remove that. Of course, we could have changed the colors of these elements as we went along, but I didn't choose to do that. I just didn't want to waste the time, but you could have done that. But let's see how we're going to change these outer values. So for example, if we had the first area was just 10 and the second area was, for example, 70, then we can just type those values in and you can see that the areas on the chart are going to change and the pointer is going to be pointing relative to where it is in the chart. So it's somewhere in area 2 because that's where the value of 57 would appear. Now you can link this cell with, this is the one that's adjusting the setting. You could link this to a cell in an underlying worksheet, for example, so that you could move it wherever you wanted to move it to. You can change the width of this little pointer by just changing the width value. And one is just a small, nice looking little pointer. So choose what makes best sense to you. But if you want to change the pointer value, you're going to be changing the value in this cell. If you want to change the value of the bits and pieces around the top half of the chart, just change area 1, 2 and 3 because hidden is going to adjust automatically because it is the total of area 1, 2 and 3. So I hope this helps you create really super interesting little gauge charts in Microsoft Excel. If you like carefully researched content like this, clearly presented in a step-by-step -step format so that you can get great results every time, then you'll love my other YouTube videos. So give this video a thumbs up and click to subscribe to the channel. And on the screen now, you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you to watch next.